I remember being a child and having my mom send me back to my room to clean. She'd say that the state of your environment reflects what's going on in your head. When you look at your environment in relation to your creative process, think of this. Is it helping you or hurting you? We pull a lot of inspiration from our environment, but it's important to remember that decluttering is not limited to a physical space. It also includes decluttering the mind. It's trickier to declutter your mind. If we looked inside my mind, it would look like a junk drawer filled with all sorts of stuff. Song lyrics, seeds I want to plant in my garden, some sort of trauma from years ago, my favorite cheese, all sorts of stuff. But in my physical bookshelf, I keep things that inspire me, like books about setting boundaries, taking care of myself emotionally, and reading memoirs from people I admire because they give me motivation to do something with myself. But in the pursuit of collecting inspiration, I often forget to declutter the mind to make space for these new ideas. How are we ever supposed to move forward if we don't pave a path for ourselves? It's easier to clean things up if it has a physical form because we can clearly see what has to change, but decluttering the mind requires a critical sort of self-awareness to filter out what can stay in our mind and what needs to go. And most of the time, there is a lot more we have to let go of than keep. In the last vlog, I got new books from a book fair, and so I wanted to make some space for it on my shelves. I can't deny that I love art and books as a form of escapism. We all do it. We have our favorite shows, movies, books, activities that we love to do that help us cope with the stress of everyday life. But when we partake in escapism or allow ourselves to be consumed by stress, it removes us from the present moment, and our physical space will reflect this back to us. Moderation and balance is the key. Taking care of our physical space also helps us take care of our mind. I got this book called The Art of Grief at the book fair and I read a page that had an impact on me and the way I view art. The paragraph says, Linda Goldman points out that today's children are grieving children. Through TV, the violence of war, terrorism, guns, murder, and suicide are all brought into our homes. Children experience constant losses of many different types. By acknowledging their losses, we can affirm their reality. Children and teens escape and deny just as do adults. Often, children work through grief in the form of play. For children, the process of art making is a way to gain symbolic control over the experience of loss and death. Art is a way for them to establish an inner sense of security and safety. I took this in and thought about how I wanted to apply this to my art. What do I want my art to say? And what is my art currently communicating? If I'm unsure while creating, the hesitation and confusion will show in my art. If I create art with confidence, that will also show itself. If my art is looking a bit messy and wild, it might mean that the state of my mind is somewhat similar.
had to clean out other opinions from people in my head. Thoughts of doubt saying that what I make isn't good enough, or that I wasn't capable of being an artist, whatever that means. These thoughts sat in the corner of my brain, rotting, until I decided to take the trash out little by little, by journaling, mostly, and lots and lots of cleaning, reflecting. I was able to hear my own thoughts again after clearing out the mind trash, bit by bit. When you hear a negative voice in your head, most of the time, that voice does not belong to you, but was a memory of someone projecting their own fears and beliefs onto your work, which we then took and internalized. If art was something you loved growing up, whatever kind of activity it was, think of discovering that love and passion you initially had as digging up treasure. It's a journey to rediscover what you love, climbing through obstacles and clearing away the mess of opinions that aren't even yours to begin with. Figure out which thoughts are yours and which ones came from others. Eventually, you will be able to hear your own voice again. Hello, I'm wearing a sweater that's nice and fuzzy, and I feel like that little cat calico critter that I had with the backpack. You see the little pieces of fur sticking out on her? The sweater that I'm wearing right now looks exactly like her. <laughs> so cute. These are my sisters. I'm putting her back in the crystal jail. It's not jail. I think the geode is just her preferred sitting space the little calico bunnies that are with the crystal ball they're still on my desk <laughs> i think they're so funny to look at like what do they see in there i don't know <laughs> it's been about a week since i started the painting and decluttered my bookshelf area i think it's really important to cut ourselves some slack when we're trying to go through a change in our lives something like decluttering or clearing out physical items as well as maybe even emotions it's something that takes time and i jumped into this thinking that i could just get everything finished in a day after i did that full cleanup in the first day i was exhausted the past few days i have done some reflecting on my space and the painting i am still happy with the idea just not very satisfied with the execution of it the painting still isn't complete i think i'm going to give it a rest for now and then i'm going to do the watercolor version of it and then revisit this afterwards so that I can make the changes that I actually want to make. I have also been a little bit more antsy lately because um, the weather has been warming up a tiny tiny bit and so that means I have been getting some soil. I think it is still too cold outside to plant some fruits and veggies and herbs but yeah I've just been excited and gathering soil and the things that I need for that. Just a lot of stuff happening in here. We're just people with other responsibilities and many, many things happening in our lives. I am trying my best to deal with that. If you're making any big changes, remember to take it slow and don't be too hard on yourself if things don't happen right away or happen in the way that you want them to. We will get there. Just might take a little, a little extra time, but that's okay. I'd rather it take its time and happen versus not happen at all. Mm. Yeah, take it easy on yourselves.